So it's been over six months since I made the switch from Panasonic to Olympus. Now, do I regret it? And will I switch back to Panasonic in the future? Stick around, we'll talk about it. So I've been using Panasonic cameras pretty consistently for the past six years, with some Canon, Sony, and Blackmagic cameras thrown in the mix here and there. With each brand that I switched to, I always ended up right back at Panasonic. I think the main reason is that the Panasonic cameras provided the best value for my money for the longest time. The image quality, features, and reliability of my GH1, GH3, G6, GX7, GH4, GX85, S5, and G85 was something pretty special about the Panasonic Lumix cameras. But as most of you know by now, I shoot all of my videos exclusively on the Olympus EM1 Mark II. So I wanted to tell you some of the pros and cons of switching to Olympus. And although it may not seem like a very big switch to some because Panasonic and Olympus are both micro four thirds, there are a lot of differences and compromises that you have to keep in mind. So first let's start out with things that I like about Olympus. Now keep in mind, a lot of these are gonna be pretty specific to the EM1 Mark II because not every Olympus camera has the same features. So the first one should be pretty obvious and that is the really good autofocus that the Olympus cameras have. That's something that I really missed with my Panasonic cameras is that they just didn't have good autofocus. And even though there are some cameras like the G9 and the S5 that have usable autofocus, still nowhere near the level that the EM1 Mark II or any of the Sony or Canon cameras have. The second thing that I really like is there's no cropping in 4K unless you're shooting with an IBIS mode, but I'll get to that later. In a lot of the Panasonic cameras, if you shoot in 4K, there's an additional crop, more so than if you were shooting in 1080p. So cameras like the GH4, the G7, the G85, those all had additional crops on the already small sensor of those cameras. And that's something that I was always really frustrated with. On the EM1 Mark II, the 1080 and the 4K is the same field of view, which is something that I really like. So the third thing that I really like is I really like the body styles of the Olympus cameras. I feel like they have a pretty good mixture of ergonomic cameras, but also cool looking cameras. Kind of a mixture between Panasonic and maybe Fujifilm. Now how a camera looks shouldn't ever be a determining factor for why you buy it, but it is kind of cool to have a cool looking camera. So number four is the cinematic features of cameras like the EM1 Mark II. It has Cinema 4K, which regular 4K is 3840 by 2160. Cinema 4K is 4096 by 2160. So you get a little bit more space this way, which I really like. I can also set my shutter to 1 48th, which is the proper shutter speed for shooting 24 frames. And you have things like OM Log, which unlike Cine D or Cine V, OM Log is an actual log profile that you can switch to other log profiles in software like Cinematch, which I think is a pretty cool cinematic feature. And lastly, one of the things that I really like about this EM1 Mark II is that the IS-1 mode, which is the mode that crops in a little bit onto your sensor, that image stabilization mode is just as good as Panasonic image stabilization. I still prefer the image stabilization on Panasonic cameras more so than the Olympus because it doesn't crop as much with the Olympus, it does crop in a little bit more, but it does give you insanely stable footage. I don't really like IS-2, which doesn't crop into your image, but you get kind of warpy edges, kind of like a Fuji camera. IS-1 is a very solid image stabilizer, and it works just as well as any Panasonic camera that I've used, and it makes me need a gimbal a lot less. So now let's get into the things that I don't like so much since switching to Olympus. And I gotta start it off with what I was talking about, IS-2. Shooting an IS-2 is great, but if you're out on any kind of a wide angle lens, you're gonna get crazy warping on the sides, which I just really, really don't like. That's super frustrating, especially when I'm trying to keep a wider frame, because if I want to get rid of that warping, I gotta switch to IS-1, and that crops into the image even more. So that's something that has been kind of annoying to me, but I've just had to learn to live with. Second thing that I don't like too much is that the built-in color profiles, I don't necessarily like as much as Panasonic's. For instance, shooting in Cine V on my GH4, my G85, that was a 
like really good just baked in profile where all the colors just looked amazing whereas i don't necessarily like the flat or natural profile as much on this em1 mark ii not saying these are bad profiles because i've learned to work with them and you know get them to look good but i liked the baked in profiles on panasonic cameras a little bit more than the olympus cameras so the third con which i think is actually pretty significant and something that i've been kind of frustrated with pretty recently is that there's no real compact budget companion cameras for these Olympus cameras like there is for Panasonic's. And what I mean by that is there are small compact like Olympus pen cameras that you can get, but they don't necessarily have very good video features. And a lot of them are way overpriced in my opinion. Whereas with the Lumix line, you can get a GH5 and then pick up a GX85 as like a little B-roll companion camera to the GH5. Or you could pick up a little LX100, which has a micro four thirds sensor and great video features. Olympus doesn't really have a camera like that. Sure, there's the Olympus pens that probably have a little bit of video features, but they're just not gonna be as good as shooting on one of those smaller Panasonic cameras. Even the little brothers to my EM1 Mark II, like the EM10 Mark III, it has 4K and it shoots good looking video, but it doesn't shoot in the same flat profile that my EM1 Mark II does. So in order to get a Olympus camera that shoots in the same kind of color profiles, I would have to actually just buy another EM1 Mark II Mark II or upgrade to an EM1 Mark III and keep my EM1 Mark II as my B camera, which is kind of frustrating. I wish that Olympus had a small little compact, either a fixed lens camera or an interchangeable lens camera like the pens that shot in flat. I don't even want a Lomblog 400. I just want an Olympus camera, small and budget friendly, that can shoot in flat that I can mix with my EM1 Mark II like I could with a GX85 and my G85. That combo was great, but I don't have the same combo options for Olympus cameras. All right, lastly, we're gonna talk about audio. Now this is something that a lot of Olympus shooters have been struggling with and it's the, there's like a really weird hiss to your audio when you're recording and Olympus cameras don't have as clean of audio or as easy to use audio menus as the Panasonic's do. My GH3 had a very, very clean preamp in comparison to my EM1 Mark II, I could just plug a Rode Video Micro or Comica VM10 straight into my GH3, the audio would sound fine. The EM1 Mark II, I have to make sure that not only the plug-in power is on, but when the plug-in power is on, I get a weird hiss so I have to turn the plug-in power off. And not only do I have to turn the plug-in power off, I have to make sure that this weird Olympus PCM recorder link thing is inoperative. And sometimes when I make it inoperative, that removes my ability to change my recording levels. And there's just a lot of like weird little things like that. that like, why can't they just get rid of that PCM recorder thing? I don't think anybody uses that take that off, make that plug-in power thing an easier thing to get to on like the super control panel and just make the whole audio interface just a little bit easier to use. Now, maybe it is on the, the newer cameras, the EM1 Mark III or the new OM1, but that's something that's been super frustrating about this EM1 Mark II. And hopefully it's been fixed in the newer cameras, but that's something that, I mean, you know, Panasonic has had good preamps in their cameras since the GH3. So it is frustrating when you're moving from Panasonic cameras to an Olympus. So what's the conclusion? I find myself missing shooting with Panasonic cameras a lot and even almost purchase a GH3 or G85 on a daily basis just to have one again. But I think sticking to a decision I made to learn a new camera and try to utilize it as much as possible is a really good thing to do. The only reason I got decent looking stuff out of my GH3 is because I spent so much time learning that camera and pushing it to its limits. And although I don't know if I'll stick with Olympus as as long as I did my beloved Panasonic cameras, more and more I'm realizing that the camera that I use doesn't make good looking images. That's up to me. So anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed this little video about my switch to Olympus cameras. If you did, it'd be really cool if you hit the like button. And if you'd like to watch some more of my videos, you can click on either side of my face. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you all next time. Later.